In this video, I want to start talking about two properties that allow us to count the number of elements in the set. The addition principle and the multiplication principle. I may have to do the multiplication principle in a second video, but first of all, why do we need to count elements in the set? Well, what is probability? In layman's turn, it's basically assigning a number to a particular event. Uh, the event might be winning a lottery or guessing the correct answer on a test, selecting the ace from a deck of cards, or even getting a full house, which is a poker hand, rolling a sum of 7 or 11 on a pair of dice, uh, probability of having a boy or girl, probability that a light bulb will last more than a 1,000 hours, probability that you wait in line more than 15 minutes at a restaurant, and so forth. So how do you determine the probability event? Well, generally, you take the number of ways that your event can occur, and you divide it by the number of total possibilities. Now, this makes a big assumption. This assumes that each event is equally likely to occur. Uh, some, some experiments, that's not true, so we have to take a different approach. Um, in order to count the number of elements in a set is important to calculating probability. So that's why we need counting techniques. So here's an example. Suppose you toss two coins. What's the probability that both coins are head? Well, there's four possible outcomes. Both coins could be heads. The first coin could be head, second coin tails. This first coin could be tails, second coin heads, or they could both be tails. There's only one way to get the desired event, head, head. So therefore, we would assume, generally, that each of these four is equally likely, so we would say there's one out of four ways to get both heads. Now in other examples it may not be as easy. If you bought a lotto ticket and you want to know the probability that your all your numbers are selected, um, would you want to write out all possible scenarios? It would take a long time. What if you are dealt five card hand of cards and you want to know your chances of getting a full house or some other hand? Well, would you want to write down every five card hand so that you can count them? Probably not. So we need counting techniques to help us count how many elements in a set. And I'll let you read this uh, paragraph on counting techniques. So pause the video if you need to. Uh, the counting techniques that we're going to talk about the first two are the addition and the multiplication principle. Then we'll move on to permutations and combinations. Now, I've already talked a little bit about set notations, so let me just remind you, U, the capital letter U, is the universal set. So, if we selected a card from a standard deck, U would be the set containing all 52 cards. But if we selected a three-card hand from a deck, you would be the set containing all three card hands. So in other words, it would be it would be a lar much larger set because there's a lot more three card hands than there are one card hands in a deck of cards. Uh, a union B, we've talked about that before. Um, so suppose U is these shapes, uh, circle, triangle, square, pentagon, and so on. Suppose A, B, and C represent the following shapes. A is a circle, triangle, square, hexagon. B is octagon, square, diamond, tri diamond, triangle. And C is pentagon, heart, diamond. Well, we talked about union before, so you know that you just put everything that's in A and B to get the union in this set. And you put everything that's in A plus everything that's in C to get the union of A union C. So that's, as I said, we've already talked about union. And then if you want the intersection, you have to find the elements that are in both sets simultaneously. So the elements that are in both set A and B are the triangle and square. And then let's say you wanted B intersect C. The only element that's in both B and C is the diamond. So that would be the only shape that's in both those sets. So the intersection of B and C would be the diamond. And of course the complement uh, would be what's not in the set. So if A is the circle, triangle, square, and hexagon, then A prime would be all those elements that are not in A that are in the universal set. And if B is octagon, square, diamond, and triangle, then B prime would be all those elements that are not in B that are in the universal set, and then similarly, similarly for C. 
the capital letter defines the set, but this notation means the number of elements that are in the set. So if you go back to the sets above, A had four elements, so we would say that the number in A is four. A intersect B has two elements, so we would say the number in A intersect B is two. A prime has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six elements, so the number in A prime would be six. And of course the empty set is the set that contains no elements, and we've already talked about how you talk about the element of two sets. So now let's talk about our first counting principle. This is called the addition principle. The addition principle states that for any two sets A and B, the number of elements in the union is the number of elements in the first set plus the number of elements in the second set minus the number of elements in the intersection. The reason we have to subtract this off is because if you don't, you'll actually end up including the intersection twice. Now, if there is no intersection, then you don't have to worry about this. So if there is no intersection, then the number in the union is just the number in A plus the number in B. Let's talk about our sets from above. All right, find the number of elements in A union B without actually counting them. Well, if you go back to above, you'll see that, you'll remember that in set A we had four elements. Let's see. In set A we had four elements. Uh, let's look at B real quick. Where's B? Set B has four elements. So set A has four elements. Set B has four elements. But notice that there are triangle is in both sets and also the square is in both sets. So there's two elements in A intersect B. So if we were just to say 4 plus 4 we would get 8. But there's not 8 in the union. There's only 6. That's because we, we would have counted the triangle and the square twice. So to avoid that we add 4 plus 4, the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B, then we subtract the number of elements in the intersection and we get 6. And you can see the 6 elements here. Now for A union C, if you go back and look at A and C, A has 4 elements, C has 3 elements, but notice there's no intersection in A and C. So in that case, since there's no intersection, you can just add the number of elements from A to the number of elements in C and get the seven elements. In other sets it might be more difficult to check that, so we need that principle. Make sure you familiarize yourself with a set of playing cards. Um, we have a standard deck of 52 cards, so our universal set is going to be all 52 cards. I'm going to let A be the set of all red cards, so that would be like the Ace of Hearts, Two of Hearts, Three of Hearts, and so on. Ace of Diamonds, Two of Diamonds, Three of Diamonds, and so on. So it's 13 hearts and 13 diamonds. So the number in A is 26. I'm going to let B represent the set of face cards. So it, there's, there's 12 face cards in the deck. Jack, Queen, and King of Hearts. Jack, Queen, and King of Diamonds. Jack, Queen, and King of Spades. Jack, Queen, and King of Clubs. So there's 12 face cards. I'm going to let C represent the set of twos in the deck. And there's, there's four twos in a standard deck of cards. Now, let's find the number in A intersect B. That's... That's pretty simple. There's Jack of Hearts, Queen of Hearts, King of Hearts, Jack of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, King of Diamonds. Those are the six cards that are both uh, red cards and face cards simultaneously. Now, to get the union, I simply take the number of elements in A, which is 26, plus the number of elements in B, which is 12, and then subtract off the number in the intersection. So I get 32 in the union. Now for B intersect C, the number of elements in B intersect C is zero because it's the empty set. So if I want to find the number in the union of B union C, then I can just add the number in B plus the number in C, which is 12 plus 4, or 16. If you fill out a Venn diagram where A would be for sets A and B only, so a would be the set of red cards, so we know there's 26 in this circle for red cards. B would be the set of, 12, of the 12 face cards, so there would be 12 cards in this circle. And now we know that six of those fall in here, 
in the intersection. So that means that if you take 26 minus 6, there's 20 out in here. And if you take 12 minus 6, there's 6 in here. So what that means is there's 20 cards that are red cards and not face cards. And there are 6 cards that are not red cards and are face cards. Now if you add these 3 together, 20 plus 6 plus 6, you get 32. And if you subtract 32 from the total number of cards, 52 minus 32, tells me that there's 20 cards out there somewhere, and those 20 cards are the ones that are outside of the set. Those are the cards that are not red and not face cards. So that's the Venn diagram. And so you can see over here I summarized everything over here. But once you get that diagram completed, you can pretty much answer any question that's asked about how many elements are in these sets. We'll wrap up with a couple more examples, and then uh, there's some practice problems at the end you can look at. Here we have a class of 35 students. I know 19 are married, 20 are blonde, and 7 that are both married and blonde. So I've got some questions to answer here, so let me fill out a Venn diagram. Here's my rectangle that represents the 35 students. This circle over here represents the married students, which is 19. The circle over here represents the 20 uh, blonde students. And then remember, we have 7 that are both. So if I have 7 that are both, then I can say 19 minus 7, and that leaves me 12 students that are, not, that are married but not blonde. And then 7 from 20 gives me 13 students that are not married but are blonde. And then when you add these together, you get 32 total out of 35, so that leaves three that are neither married nor blonde. So then you can now answer these questions. How many are married but not blonde? So that would be these 12. How many are blonde but not married? That would be these 13. How many are blonde or married? You can just add these three together to get the union, or you can add these two together and then subtract the intersection using the addition principle. Either way, you get 32. How many are neither blonde nor married? That would be these three out here. And how many are not blonde would be everybody that's outside the blonde circle, so that would be the 12 here and the 3 here, which is 15. I'm going to just pause the video on this one, or you can pause the video here and look at this one. It's just like the first one. So when you're done uh, looking at this, then just move on to the next example. And here's another example. Um, this one says, just gives you that there's 110 in the union, there's 50 in set A, there's 75 in set B, and there's 105 in the uh, union. Well, from the addition principle, we know that the number in the union equals the number in A plus the number in B minus the number in the intersection. So if we plug those numbers in, we get 105 equals 50 plus 75 minus the number in the intersection. And then we can solve this equation for the number in the intersection to get that there's 20. And then uh, once you know that there's 20 in the intersection, which is A, there's 20 for A, then for B, you can fill out a Venn diagram and find out how many is uh, in not A intersect B, and also uh, how many is in not A intersect not B, and so forth. So you can uh, fill out a Venn diagram to uh, finish this problem out. I think from the Venn diagram you'll be able to answer the questions. This one here is just how many is not in the union. So you find the union and then just take that away from 110 and that'll give you the, the answer. Okay, so you can go to the lecture notes if you like to see these, but here's a couple of practice problems that you can practice on. So pause the video, take a look at these, and see if you can uh, get the answers. Okay, so for practice number two, I'll scroll on down here and hopefully you didn't peek, and you can see that I had to do a three-set Venn diagram to fill out all of the sets here. Now, one thing I want you to remember is that these sets don't intersect. Moving on to the next video, I'll talk about the multiplication principle.